What is going on YouTube? My name is Kyle. You have made it to Obsessed Auto and today doing a little change on the truck. Now y'all can talk all the smack you want about having a lifted truck, but do you want to know the one single-handed reason why I love lifted trucks? About to do an oil change on this with no jack, no jack stands. We're sitting on the freaking tires and we're doing an oil change. So in other news, the dune buggy is gone. It sold this morning. The Grand Prix is gone. Sold it this morning. Um, let's see. I've got six vehicles that I'm talking about right now to some people. So we'll see what comes into fruition and what does not go from there. But anyways, I don't need to show you the whole process on this. I'll probably just do a time lapse of no oil changes. It's just going to be like lickety split. I'm a mobile one guy. That's what gets put in my trucks. Um, always factory re replacement filters. I just stuttered. Always factory replacement filters. Um, so GM, obviously AC Delco, Ford Motorcraft, et cetera, et cetera. Um, you know, good enough for the factory, good enough for me. I'm not building thousand horsepower hot rods, so we don't need anything crazy. Anyways, got the cap off, got the phone hanging out in case somebody hits me up. Um, three wrenches, because <laughs> I don't remember which size it is. I want to say it's a 13, but 13, 14, or 15. Uh, oil filter claw from Matco. New filter, drain pan's already down there. Let's get to freaking work. Man, who knew you could drain oil in like four seconds? <laughs> Not me. I'm just kidding, that was a time lapse, so who knows how long it's gonna take. I got this cool little uh, funnel here from OEM Tools. It fits a Ford Mazda, however, it fits perfectly inside of that hole for a uh, Chevy 5.3. So I'm just getting the tripod open. I'll show you how fast this mammer jammer works. So we're gonna do the five quart jug first and foremost just because this is usually the most time consuming, but not with this funnel. Can you guys still see kind of not really at all? Put my finger right here. I love this freaking thing. As fast as you can pour, it just takes it. Real time. Not speeding that up. Literally, as I'm done pouring this, it's in there. Done. Finito. This is a 5.3 liter LS based engine. So, that means we take six quarts. Number six. Done. Then we'll see if I've got any MOA left from BG because I absolutely love that stuff. I know for damn sure I've got 44K for the fuel system. Yep, I don't have any MOA. So that concludes the oil change. Just got confirmation that we're going to look at a truck. Another crew cab. This one's a Cat Eye Silverado. 03 to 07 classic body. I'm a sucker for those. Got a boatload of miles. We're talking like 365,000, something stupid like that. Um, but in this market, you as well as I know, if you have any clue about the market, that this market is just stupid right now. And so what's gonna happen is I'm going to basically bring it home, verify there's nothing insane wrong with it, assuming that I buy it, and uh, put it up for sale immediately. Because apparently it doesn't need anything. So we'll obviously do an inspection test drive, verify that that is the truth, and go from there. Um, so yeah, 
I'm gonna put washer fluid in this, so I've got that, and I know it's in there. Somewhere's about there. Um, yeah. I don't need any washer fluid. We're filled up already. I like it when that happens. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna reset my reminder and change shirts back into my normal shirt. Get this thing pulled out of the garage. Go look at a truck. Oh, hey guys, how's it going? So I'm just uh, in my new truck. So, gosh darn, that thing sounds nice. So this truck is gonna give uh, JR's $3,500 Silverado a run for its money. This is my $1,500 Silverado. It is a 2006 um, one owner pickup truck. It's got just over, hell, I don't know. We've got so many warnings on here. Seat belt, airbag, brake, ABS, check engine. We've got, we've got the whole treat there. We've got 364,645 miles of a one owner truck. As you can tell, the windshield trashed. I got a guy. The headliner trashed. I have no radio and there's a door panel for that back door behind me. This window is completely gone. Needs new glass. Um, let's see. Clean and clear title. One owner. The title literally has 1,100 miles written on it. So this thing is a uh, it's treated somebody fairly well. We've got the on the floor, four wheel drive. It's an LT custom ordered with SS front brakes. I, I don't know, and a Ford 8. So no idea what the heck that is. We've got random wiring down here. Let's see. Glove box is empty. We have no manual, random wiring. Uh, but yeah, this thing's just cruising right along. It's got aftermarket wheels. I wish they were 17 inch aftermarket wheels because I would definitely put those on my Sierra and put my Sierra wheels on this, just flip flop tires. Um, but I don't really feel like go going out and buying a new set of 18 inch tires or you said even, and, or pardon me, you set of 17s and then trying to find 35, 12, 50, 18. So that just doesn't sound fun. So we've got a straight joyride moment right now. But yeah, so as soon as I get back to Wichita, I will take video of the exterior of this thing. It's not the prettiest, but fortunately, I, as well as you guys, know a detailer. So we'll get that all, all sham wowed up. Um, but yeah, just cruising down the highway 55 brake pedals a little spongy so I'm gonna try to start by bleeding the brakes we'll go from there uh, yeah dude I'm freaking pumped this could not have worked any better so AC works heat works find a cheap aftermarket stereo that'll be that easy peasy sweetie Petey. all right so I am officially back in Mays I bought a running, driving, four-wheel drive Chevy Silverado half-ton on aftermarket wheels for $1,500 cash. I'm pulling into O'Reilly's right now. It's got a couple little little piddly items that I want to price out here before I go to uh, junkyard and what have you. So we're going to go check that out. Got a super duper leak that just showed up that's fun uh, but yeah that's this is her oh wrong button roll the window down just in case I'll take that for 1500 bucks all day every day oh hey there new day oh man these two-part videos man so got flip truck 
right back there. I've got one of my favorite tools in my arsenal, Carista. You can find this thing pretty much anywhere. Pretty much anywhere. We're gonna hook this thing up and see what the codes are for. But anyways, this is your first real good look at the $1,500 Silverado. So this is a one owner vehicle, insane. Supposedly it has SS front brakes, aftermarket ballistic, 18 inch wheels, wild peak, 33 inch tires. Stanky interior, amazingly crappy headliner. Door panels off right back there, needs a door handle. So yeah, let's uh, get Carista out, answer this phone call, and then hook up to the phone. What's up, brother? All right, got a buddy of mine at the auction. Um, I can't go because I got some errands to run. So we're trying to trying to get some shop supplies. So I've got the Carista app opened up. I'm gonna go ahead, turn the key on, connect. Definitely gonna shut that off. Holy smokes. That thing's not even held in. That's sketchy. Light and the airbag on. Let's see if we can figure out what we've got. Holy smokes, we got four codes, people. Knock sensor and evap. Freaking five threes and knock sensors, man. Fortunately, they're very, very easy. This coolant temp below operating range. I don't know how I feel about that one. That one might just be a sensor. I haven't seen that one recently on a 5.3. Um, knock sensor, yeah, whatever. Um, EVAP vent control circuit, so we just, yeah. We're just gonna blow all these out of here, and then I'll go for a drive here in a little bit. See which ones come back. So the thing about Carista is she's not smart enough to do airbag lights, which is cool, whatever. So we're gonna have to break out the Autel for that, um, but that's not gonna happen right now. I really wish this thing had a window. That window is completely broken. And yeah, it'll have a window soon, just not right now. Fired right up, no check engine light, airbag light will come back. We do need an oil change. There we go. I think that the oil pressure sending unit is bad just because we're up at 80 pounds. That's not normal. Um, then yeah, I'm definitely going to ozone the absolute F out of this thing because it smells like a work truck. I mean, obviously it was a work truck, but I don't want it to smell like one. Let's see. Got my windshield guy called. That'll be done. Um, early next week, today is Thursday, so it'll probably be done Monday. Let me see what else do we have. Headliner, I need to call on that, because it straight up looks like we had a lion claw the actual F out of this, and uh, it's sagging as well with a random, I don't know what that is, but I don't want to pull it because then the headliner would sag on my head. Um, Airbox cover. It's not the air box itself, it's just the cover is busted. We've got some random house wiring down here. I don't know what the heck that is. Um, as you guys saw yesterday, sorry, you guys weren't pointing at me at all. As you saw yesterday, the uh, radio is out of here. We've got some glorious wiring with uh, no heat shrink or anything, so I'm definitely gonna have to fix all of that BS. But for now, we're gonna try to figure this out and see about 
where all of that went. Oh, horn works. Yeah, that explains that. No screws holding that in. Okay, fine, whatever. Trick on these, you use the ignition key to push up on the tab. Unless it's totally, totally jacked up like this one is. Whatever. Get it out of the way enough. Alright, so... It looks like there's a single plug, which I thought there should be two, question mark? And that is for the cluster. Man, there's only one. Only one plug. So I don't know if that radio that I got is going to work in here or not. But uh, we'll sure give it the old college try. And if it does plug in, it's gonna be VIN locked. I'm already aware of that. So we can get that fixed pretty simply. Um, hopefully with the Autel. Might have to call JR. He knows a lot more about Autels than I do. So, but yeah, we've just got a few things to tidy up on this, but this is the uh, preliminary walkthrough. I'm showing you what's up on this thing. Um, super base model. It was like a custom order, I suppose. Um, from what the guy said, it, uh, yeah, SS front brake package, but that was the only part that was SS. I, I don't freaking know. He could have been absolutely full of bananas and I, whatever to me, I'm just gonna do what I always do. Fix it, sell it, move to the next one. So we got half of a ratchet strap back here, some, some nails. I don't know what the heck that is. NRA sticker, because America. I'm strongly considering keeping these wheels. Um, you know, just like every GMT 800 missing the bezel for the tailgate. Um, yeah. But anyways, this is the Entry to my $1,500 Silverado four-wheel drive 1500 Cat Eye Edition. So if you did like this video, please smash that thumbs up button down there. I appreciate every single one of those that I get. If you do like content and you do want to see what I do with that truck back there, huh, itchy nose. If you do like content like this, and you want to see what happens to that cat eye back there, hit that subscribe button, see what happens. Because I guarantee you it's going to look a lot prettier than it does right now. Um, I think that's all I've got for you guys. Until the next installment of Project $1500 Flip Silverado, I'll see you next time.